Thank you for listening to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bonatti alongside Ethan Euchre. Happy to be here. Yes, Jeff Wagstaff. Hello. And world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. Hello, everyone. Hello. President Trump's war with the fake news media has only ramped up over the course of his presidency, and over 95% of Americans are troubled by the lack of ethics in the media. But um, did you know that the practice of deceptive journalism can be traced back to Watergate and the Washington Post? Joining us now is John O'Connor, author of Postgate, How the Washington Post Betrayed Deep Throat, Covered Up Watergate, and Began Today's Partisan Advocacy Journalism. Welcome to the show, and thank you for being with us, John. It's great to be here, Kimberly. Yes. Tell us briefly about your book, How the Creation of Fake News Can Be Traced Back to the Washington Post, and How They Handled Watergate. I've always been troubled by the bias and deception of the media. But I had always thought as a student of Watergate that the real shining golden exception of this was Watergate, that everything was perfectly done and everything that happens after that is merely a fall off from perfection. I represented Mark Felt. I did a book earlier with him called G-Man's Life. And I had a lot of connection with the Washington Post. And I go into it in this book. I dug up 3,000 articles that the Post published during Watergate and compared them to knowledge that they knew or should have known. The Post led everyone to believe that this wiretapping was part of a campaign strategy and for campaign information. It was not, and they kept out of the papers that which the burglars were really listening to. And the second part of this is they kept out of the papers. The CIA had infiltrated the White House and it sort of conned some lower level guys into doing this for the the CIA's purposes. We don't know that as a country, we get rid of a popularly elected president on the basis Mm -hmm. of false information. Now we have history books written falsely, Mm -hmm. that this was a campaign tactic by Richard Nixon. It was not. And it's all because of deceptive reporting. And I was stunned after going through these articles about how deceptive the journalism was during Watergate. And I realized that all the fame, the riches, the Pulitzer Prizes that the Post got in Watergate really was looked at by these young journalists who all started flocking to the field. Those were incentives for deceptive journalism. The very nature of investigative journalism as it's practiced now, when one is seeking to get a skin on the wall to enhance one's journalistic credentials, it's necessarily deceptive. And maybe they don't think it's fraudulent. Maybe they think it's cool, but they're doing it right now. When you studied the history of journalism, Watergate was kind of the gold standard of reporting when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And basically what you're saying is that that's not true. (laughs) Right. That's right. Now, to be fair, there were shards of truth in there because some White House personnel were, the lower level people were behind the burglary, and there were some lies told and some tricks to try to avoid investigation. However, the Post withheld key exculpatory evidence and mitigating evidence where rather than this being a one-ring circus as it was, it should have been a three-ring circus. Mm -hmm. The Post, in order to protect the Democrats and the DNC, did not reveal what it knew about the DNC and its shenanigans, nor did it reveal that the CIA had infiltrated the White House and was really behind Watergate. Had those things been known... Yes, Nixon technically violated the law, and it would have been something of a scandal. But I think uh, the jury of public opinion just may have said, are we going to impeach somebody over this? It would put it in context. I really believe that all this thing is just only a type of a cover-up. We talk a lot, we discuss a lot, but we don't act in anything. If somebody in that position lies or in that position commits a fraudulent information, should be immediately accused, removed from the news, fired. And if you do few things like that solid, I promise you they will change this direction. What happened is they allow the lies and, and then we keep talking about the lies, but we don't do anything. And I think that's the major problem. Yeah, think about this. What happens when the news media is caught up in a lie? They double down. Nobody does get fired. And the New York Times editor runs to people and cries about the First Amendment when Trump calls them out. Am I right on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think so. Why is it, though, when the truth really came out that they gave little half-truths and not full information, why weren't they stripped of their right um, to be uh, a news, a news outlet. Yes. <laughs> at all. Why weren't they stripped of all their uh, 
journalism credentials at that point? The fact is, is that people didn't know. Everybody gets fooled. And Mm -hmm. when somebody comes out and tries to say that they're deceptive, they get crushed. I expect that these, the Post is going to try to crush me. This book that I come out with is really the first exploration of the Post reporting. I mean, this is how many years after the fact? It's 47 years after Watergate, 45 years after all the president's men comes out. Mm-hmm. And I'm really the first person that's published this. I've had people slam their phones down when I tell an agent or a publisher that I want to expose the post. They're not in the business of taking on that 800-pound gorilla. It's tough. The media controlled the narrative. Like someone once said, you don't get in a fight with anyone who buys their ink by the barrel. I'm too old to care. I've had my law career. If I don't get another case, I'm fine. I don't care. It's unbelievable that the president was treated in the way that was treated and took 45 years for somebody to try to exonerate him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of our most powerful presidents was pushed from office by false news. Yes. Half-truths and zero accountability for the media. That's the problem. Thank you for joining us and discussing... um, the sorry state of the media. But uh, John O'Connor, author of Postgate, How the Washington Post Betrayed Deep Throat, Covered Up Watergate, and Began Today's Partisan Advocacy Journalism. Thank you for being on the program. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you all. Thanks, John. Take care. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching American Medicine Today. 